I never have a strict plan with where I'm going, but I know the direction. I know what my heart wants and I know what my soul constantly thinks about. And I was telling one of my friends this the other day, you think the things that you think for a reason. You feel what you feel for a reason. You're interested in what you're interested in for a reason. And I think that this whole year journey from where I have started and where I have ended was kind of crazy. It was kind of crazy. This whole year, I have set out to show people what it means to be authentic and genuine and imperfect. And that is something that I feel like I would have never let anybody see. Me sitting here and telling you guys my thoughts, thinking it through with you guys, growing with you guys, that takes a lot of vulnerability that I know I didn't have before. So let me just appreciate that. The whole branding for my YouTube is me. It is personal growth in real time. I know that this is healing for me. It is talk therapy for me. When I put out these videos, I try to make it really concise in a way that I know other people can understand if they're going through this journey as well, if they're learning as well. For whoever has been with me watching these videos, every single one of you, thank you. In the beginning of me starting this whole process, I was not really understanding why I was doing the things that I was doing other than I knew that it felt good. And in this one year process, it has been me switching from my logical authority to my emotional authority. Me and my emotions, they guide me. They lead me first and foremost before my mind can even comprehend it because my heart is directly connected to my soul, to my creativity, to my emotions. Why shouldn't I trust the things that make me feel good, the things that make me feel right? And I started thinking about this idea of how to trust my intuition more. I thought about whenever I have an idea and then I question it. I pause, I take a step back. I think to myself, Christina, what came first? The idea or are you questioning that idea? Intuition is whatever you feel first, think first. We are such powerful creators that we are able to question and doubt our thoughts. We are able to perceive our thoughts, perceive our feelings, and then transmute whatever we initially thought to completely contradict it. Isn't that fucking magic? Tell me that isn't magic. When your brain, when your body, when your heart tells you, hmm, I don't even have an example. Um, <laughs> it will be instances where I would wake up in the morning, like fresh out of my dream, and I would think initially, hmm, I dreamt about somebody that I haven't seen or talked to in a really long time. Maybe I should reach out to them. Maybe I miss them. I know that whenever I say maybe, it definitely means yes. It means yes, that is what you are feeling, but you are doubting it because you're able to. Because your mind is so powerful, you are able to doubt the things that you want. Your ego will try to come in and say things like, well, no, because it might be weird. Like you haven't seen them in a really long time and that is true. So maybe we should just not. Like why would we go back to something that already went away? And you're not really feeling like you want to see them. You're not really feeling like you miss them. No, don't let yourself say that. Your ego will come in and make excuses as to why you are feeling the things that you are feeling. Tell me why the ego is the strongest program that we have in the matrix. Your ego will literally lie to you, deceive you in order for you to stay comfortable. Tell me that's not magic. Tell me that is not power. Your ego would rather you hate somebody else, be jealous of somebody else, talk gossip about somebody else, start drama about somebody else, all to make you comfortable. That is so fucking weird. Like why? Just to make you feel okay. Like what? That's fucking insane. Oh my God. This whole year I have been learning that my ego is so big. Was? 
this whole year, I was learning that my ego was super big. And I feel like I have broken down my ego enough to the point where I'm able to decipher and trust my intuition first before I trust my ego, which I mistakenly perceived it before to be my mind. Because it is. I think we can't counteract the fact that we are human and in our biology is the need to progressively grow, progressively change. I always say that the universe only has to tell me twice because I am really like resistant to the change that needs to happen. So I feel like the universe understands that. The way my relationship works with the universe is that I feel as if I am truly aligned with the future. The universe tells me and makes me experience things, yes, when I need to experience it and I will know when I need to know and I will have it when I need to have it and I will move when I need to move. Time isn't linear. I feel as if when the universe is putting ideas in my head and I'm receiving these energetic downloads, the universe is prepping me. So I feel like I always know information like two weeks before I'm actually supposed to act. Or that's just, that's how it feels like to me. I don't know how to explain that in a different way. That's just what it is. It's really difficult to surrender to the flow of the universe and not allow your ego to take control. Another part of that control is constantly trying to decipher everything I'm feeling when I feel it. I talked about this in a video before where I should not force my heart to speak if it is not ready. When you live in such an industrial society where they treat human like they're robots and that they can go instantly like this with no breaks and they won't burn out. It's really hard to let yourself be relaxed and not mistaken it for being lazy. The time that I quit my job, you think that this would be paradise. You think who wouldn't want to be financially secure enough to be able to quit their job and do whatever they want, whenever they want. What does somebody have to complain about if they get to live like this? The ego, the perception, it's able to complain about everything. It is able to put you in a victim mentality out of anything. As something abundant as that, it is possible. Let me tell you how. So, <laughs> it was so fucking hard for me to receive, for me to sit down and allow myself to use the money that I have made for myself for these past four years or whatever much that I have been working forever, right? It was really difficult to let myself treat myself to good things besides food. In the beginning, after I quit my job, I let myself have the summer. I paid off my summer. I paid off all the bills that I needed to pay for. And then I let myself be. I could do whatever I want, whenever I wanted. Okay. I went a little far, a little far, in me spoiling myself, but I didn't spoil myself in the right kind of way. My perception of abundance before, of wealth before, had to do a lot with material, monetary, financial means. I had a budget for me to spend in the summer. It's not like I was gonna waste all my money and that was that. I said, okay, after this much amount, you can't spend any more money and you have to find a job and yaga, yaga, yaga. Needless to say, my budget went really fast because <laughs> I didn't really, I was not mindful of um, the things that I was spending. And you know, I thought that it was infinite and whatever, whatever, whatever. Yeah, yeah. When I got to the end of my budget, instantly, I forgot this certain amount of money that I had. And I was just like, I'm broke. I am poor. I have nothing. I realized how much of a little brat I was being. And that is so fucking like, oh my God. Okay. <clears throat> I realized that when you live in a world where you have to suffer and sacrifice so much of your time and energy just to be happy, knowing yourself is a privilege. That is true abundance. The abundance of time, the abundance of energy, that was the wealth that I was not acknowledging. I was so focused 
on my material, monetary, financial wealth that I completely forgot that the family that I have in my life, that is abundant. The friends that I have in my life, that is abundant. The time and energy that I'm able to spend with myself and get to know myself, that is abundant. Not everyone has the time and energy to be on the highest timeline, to be the best version of themselves, but I do. I am able to sit down and think about my feelings and not have any other responsibilities. I have nowhere to go. I have nowhere to be. I have nothing that I need to do. And I dare sit here and say that I'm poor, that I'm broke. And yesterday I had the epiphany that right now is a very abundant time for me. I'm in that middle stage where I'm not a child anymore. So I get to have more things. I get to do more things. I get to be more independent, but it's also right before in the traditional timeline of adulthood, they would say life starts picking up, life starts getting real and you have to focus on other things and yaga, yaga, yaga. Even though I don't think that the life that I will have will be stressful. Tina in the future, I trust that she will be happy. I trust that her life will be simple. I trust that she won't be stressed. Just because, just because. I was saying to myself that it is a privilege to grow with you. It is a privilege to be able to follow you throughout your life's journey and see you change and become your best self. It allowed me to be more understanding of people on their path and where they are at, especially when you meet assholes, especially when you meet people that have their worst moments, that aren't being the best version of themselves. But it's always going back to the idea that if they knew better, they would have done better because they didn't know better, this is their best. It's truly disheartening. It's like, all I can do is hope that they are able to have the time and energy to be able to really get to know themselves. I think that I can't take it personal when someone is an asshole and when someone is just mean and degrading because it's not them. They are living a life that is completely separated from their soul, that they have allowed their ego to create so many barriers in order to be comfortable. Sometimes, their fears, insecurities, worry, stress, anxiety, depression manifests itself in a way that projects their insecurity into pure hate. Everything that ever matters in this world always comes back to love. Love is the only thing that is real. It's just offering understanding that everyone comes with their own traumas and their own triggers and they are doing their best to deal with the things that they are dealt with. Because I know how strong the programming of the ego is within this matrix, I have to give everyone the benefit of the doubt that they, like so many other people, like everyone else in this world, like everyone within this world, they come with their own, own programming that protects them, that shields and masks their pain. I have to just assume that when anyone is being an asshole, that they're not being themselves, that they don't know themselves. I've been asking the universe forever to give me a reason why I say I love everybody. It's really hard to love strangers, especially when they come off as assholes. Like why do I, why, why do I have to give them anything? And I think that I finally realized that the ability for me to be genuine and nice and authentic is a privilege. It is a privilege to be living the life that I want to live, where I am able to express myself and experiment with my identity, with no barriers, with no restrictions, with nobody telling me, no, you can't do that, with no one hurting me. Not everyone gets to live the life that they want to live. And in this way, it's easy for them to manifest their pain and their discontent and project it onto other people. I really do have to offer them compassion if they were really living the life that they wanted to live and if they got to be their authentic self and they have healed, they wouldn't be hurting anybody. Yeah, I'm always bad at endings, but um, I feel like that topic is ended. So I'm sorry guys, I'm leaving. I have nothing else to say, but <laughs> choose love, choose light, choose compassion, choose kindness, choose patience, awareness, choose health, healing, growth, 
Choose yourself. Choose a different perspective that promotes your abundance, that promotes your happiness. Yaga! Goodbye.